Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romani and welcome back to this YouTube channel on all things narcissism. I apologize for the absolutely sort of horrifying video quality on this one. The member of my, a member of my team who does a lot of the shooting and sound work is a little bit sick and we need to make sure she doesn't have coronavirus. So she will be getting tested, but we needed to keep the show going, obviously. And so we're trying it this way. So I apologize if the sound is bad. Today, I'm going to take on the rather perilous issue of what does it mean if your adult child is a narcissist, okay? And um, this is a painful one because for many people, it's sort of an intergenerational reckoning of sorts that they may have suffered through a narcissistic parent themselves. Then they may have made a bad choice and chosen a narcissistic partner. And obviously then that narcissistic partner and then the toxicity of such a marriage then laid bare a narcissistic child, adult, narcissistic adult child. And that sort of triple generational story is what can make this very painful. Not to mention that for parents, there's also a looking inward and saying, where did maybe I not get something right. And it is my hope that upon watching this, there can be some sense of self-compassion, especially for those of you who are married to narcissists and who had the experience of having to endure that toxic abuse, not understanding what it was, inadvertently potentially being an enabler, your child experiencing that and that culminating in your adult child's nar uh, narcissism and them then turning around and blaming you. This is a very, very painful journey. It probably brings back a lot of, um, a lot of painful memories for you. So while I'm saying that the quality of this is not good, it's my hope that the sound is so you can hear this because I think this is a very important topic that will you know, lay, um, lay open many other topics. Before I begin, and many of you may not feel comfortable putting this in a comment section if your name is affiliated with this, but if any of you have had this experience of an adult child with an uh, <clears throat> adult child who is a narcissist, please drop those comments, especially maybe if your username is something anonymous, because I think that many people out there are suffering with this and it's one that doesn't get talked about a lot. So um, I'm hoping to sort of talk about that, open up this conversation. You know, you can also always send us a message if you have more thoughts on other directions we can take. So, and as always, if you're new to this channel, welcome, please join us, subscribe. Like I said, you can see I'm calling out to the community that watches this for comments. You, I can't begin to tell you how many interesting emails, stories, everything we hear, which often can drive our meetings on developing new content. So thank you. Come join this community. Hit that subscribe button. We put out content regularly. Like I said, come, you know, hellfire or not, we're going to keep shooting. And so, you know, always hit that bell. You'll get notifications about new content. So let's ask this question. What if your adult child is a narcissist? Now, this is a particularly painful issue, as I said. Now, unlike other relationships, even the really difficult ones, like having your own narcissistic parents and a narcissistic spouse, personally, I think this may be the most difficult one of all. Because at some level, so many parents of adult children who are narcissists at some level feel responsible for it. And here's where it gets interesting. I have worked with hundreds of people. At this point, I have heard thousands of stories from people all over the world who are either narcissistic themselves or who are enduring narcissistic abuse. Every one of these narcissists I'm hearing about, whether perpetrator or somebody who's experiencing the, the abuse, every one of those narcissists are someone's adult child, okay? Now, in many cases, it's clear as day to you why your adult child is a narcissist. Perhaps the parent, a parent or parents dropped the ball. Perhaps they, the parent or parents themselves were narcissistic or distracted. And I got to be telling you, those parents are probably not watching this video, but maybe you are. Maybe you are. But I got to say, in a not insubstantial number of cases, there are parents out there who had multiple children and only one child turned out to be the narcissist or the bully. So the cases in which this happens most often, there was often one parent, and that was usually the caregiving parent, okay? Usually a mother, but not always, who was relatively on point and loving and consistent-ish. However, at the same time, there was a second parent who was egocentric, self-involved, put his or her agenda ahead of everyone else, was controlling, was invalidating, was gaslighting, wasn't available. 
And while that one loving parent may have done the very best they could, the presence of a toxic co-parent or you know, marital partner, but this would apply, divorce or no divorce, is more than enough to foster the development of at least one of the children in a family system into narcissism. Now, in addition, a parent who is enduring narcissistic abuse from a spouse or a narcissistic co-parent after a divorce often may not be as emotionally and psychologically available as they want to be because they themselves as victims of narcissistic abuse are very confused and often didn't know what they were dealing with in the marriage. So even with the best of intentions as a parent, it still may not have been enough for certain children in the family, especially depending on the socio-developmental stage when most of the chaos was happening. And in addition, we've got to remember that temperament does play a role. Now we're going to need longitudinal developmental studies to really unpack this, but there does appear to be a temperament that is associated with the development of narcissism in adulthood. And this temperamental difference may also explain why one child from a family may grow up to be narcissistic while others in the family do not. Now, this is speculation, but the temperamental styles might be the kinds of styles we see in children who are more anxiously attached, who are more needy, who are more clingy. These kids may also be the ones who are more disruptive, more attention seeking, and just honestly more of a handful as little kids. And children with these temperaments may throughout their little lives, their tiny little child lives, have more difficult interactions with the world, which over time may develop into a more difficult personality style that sticks. And it's always them versus the world, that antagonism. But ultimately, it is on a parent to do the deep dive, to look back and figure out if something actually was different in the childhood of your narcissistic adult child compared to their siblings. It may or may not have been. This can all come down to a child's age at when certain significant family events like separations, stresses, deaths, illnesses, financial fallout, remarriage in a family take place. All of those things can affect different children differently. And this painful deep dive may also involve you reflecting on your parenting at that time. Listen, we all can't be available the way we want to be. I'm a parent. I get that. A painful telling of the story really can happen if there's a divorce, and especially if one party in the divorce is narcissistic. The chaos, the tension, the poor boundaries, the triangulation, one parent may be quickly remarrying or bringing someone new or lots of someone news into the child's life, and even the narcissistic parent speaking poorly about another, the other parent can all culminate in a child who is ultimately deeply hurt and estranged from one or both parents. The guilt over a divorce, especially a contentious divorce, can also set into place a pattern of enabling and frankly spoiling children, which is almost understandable because you're trying to make it up for that, to them, but it isn't good for everyone and can be particularly toxic and a catalyst for developing and emboldening your narcissistic adult child. Lots of narcissistic adults, we look back, they were just sort of spoiled at a certain window of time. But at the end of the day, here's the deal, you can't unring a bell. And now it is the present time and you are dealing with an unempathic, entitled, grandiose, demanding, arrogant, invalidating, gaslighting, manipulative, insecure, hypersensitive adult child who has a very big chip on their shoulder. You likely started hearing these hoofbeats in adolescence, the sullenness, the meanness, the cruel comments, the entitlement. And many people may have told you, ah, it's just adolescence, teenagers are tough. And you know what? I don't fault them for saying that because it's not necessarily an inaccurate stance. It's often true. And as the responsibilities and roles of adulthood set in, that teenage angst and struggle fades and the person stops with their entitled teenage antics and they start adulting. But in some cases, it never ends. The entitlement, the resentment, the victimhood, the hostility, the manipulation, 
those styles persist well into adulthood. And all of it gets delivered with the iron hand of, you owe me after failing me as a parent. And if you fall for that manipulation, it's going to be a long, awful ride. The sort of signature move of narcissistic adult children is to keep asking for money or some other similar kind of resource. Their hand may be outstretched every time you turn around. Rent money, money to buy a car, money for a wedding, money for yet another failed educational experience, money for some half-baked business idea, money for a house. And if you are caught up in the sort of strange trauma bond that can occur with an adult child, as well as the paralyzing guilt that you're somehow responsible. You may keep giving in, thinking that this time, this time if I give them the money, they will finally feel like life is fair, I did right by them, and they'll finally get on their feet and feel independent and start their life and we'll be okay. We'll have that healthy adult parent relationship. No, that's not gonna happen. And that's the tragedy of narcissism. Money ain't gonna fix it. Their entitlement is such that they do not feel that they need to work hard and that they should just somehow get the money and somehow magically their half-baked business idea will work out. And if it doesn't work out, they will blame you. And once you give them money for a car or a house or some other big ticket item or to get them out of a mess that they've made, pretty soon thereafter, they will be upset because they want a better one, they want a bigger one, or they will not take care of or upkeep the one that they got. I have observed parents of narcissistic children put themselves in literal financial peril, which gets really problematic as you as a parent veer to older age, perhaps living on a more fixed income, may end up having unexpected costs of all kinds, healthcare, unexpected emergencies, and I can Trust me on this one, please. Your narcissistic child will be nowhere to be found when you need any kind of help at that point. If you're lucky, one of your healthier children, whom you may not have even given nearly the same level of financial support, may step in and have help out. Or, and I got to tell you, I've seen this happen many times, you'll end up financially tapped out and in an impossible situation because your narcissistic child cleaned you out financially. Now, narcissistic children frequently play the victim, most commonly blaming you and what they allege to be your bad parenting. Or maybe they blame you for staying in a bad marriage and they blame all of that for their misery and their failings as an adult. And yeah, maybe a little bit of that is true. We'll give them that. But here's the thing. Adulthood is about stepping up and finally taking responsibility and not shifting blame. Once they recognize, though, a narcissistic adult child recognizes that their guilt-inducing manipulations are working, then you will become their financial and emotional ATM and their punching bag. And this victimhood may also result in their failure to launch in part because they're so entitled that they feel magically everything should just go their way and they're owed their big break as adults. And you may be stuck if you decide to enable them as such, having them living in your home or garage or basement or guest house if you're so blessed and listening to their verbal abuse with them blaming you for why they're still sleeping in their childhood bedroom or in your home. And in most cases, once you stop the money or you stop giving them access to limitless funds, they're going to no longer come around. And though you will have to endure an endless litany of angry emails, angry texts, angry voicemails, and trust me, if you let them down by not giving them money, they may also try to launch a smear campaign amongst family members and other people who know you and make up falsehoods about what you did or said to rally support behind them. You'd be surprised. Your friends will call you and say, hey, what's going on? And that adds to your devastation and isolation. And trust me, if you let them stay with you, they will never help with chores or cleaning or any of that.
Now these dynamics also wreak havoc on the rest of the family because the narcissistic adult child often has at least one parent that they've placed firmly in a manipulative corner. So it has all the features of any adult narcissistic relationship. The narcissistic adult child may isolate the parent they're manipulating from other family members. They may even coax that parent into giving them things like power of attorney or other financial powers, such as the executorship of a family trust or will. Narcissistic adult children may also get access to the parent's bank accounts or other financial resources, and they will rationalize this to the parent and other people by saying, hey, I'm the one who's living close to mom or dad, and I'm taking care of them, so this is my right, again, that entitlement. Their parent, the parent of an adult narcissistic child may often become quite confused as we all do in narcissistic relationships. They may make justifications for their adult child and they may even get angry at other siblings who call out their narcissistic sibling. Because the narcissistic sibling will so often triangulate and launch a smear campaign against his or her siblings, you can see how quickly an adult parent could fall under the sway of a narcissistic adult child, especially as they become more isolated and more dependent on that adult narcissistic child. Not only does all of this relate to resources while the parent is alive, they're spending the parent's money, they're getting, for example, they might get their name on the deed to a house or other big ticket items, cars, etc. But the narcissistic adult can wreak havoc and will wreak havoc when it comes to family trusts, wills, estates, and family businesses. Even if a parent in good faith attempts to create an equitable division of assets upon their death, you can be sure that the narcissistic sibling who may have already encroached themselves into the parent's finances will turn the division of assets into a, litigate, a litigated and unjust nightmare. Narcissistic adult children have no problem launching lawsuits against elderly relatives, elderly siblings, just because they're so obsessed with winning and getting what in their toxic entitled minds they believe is mine, mine, mine. Everything to them is reparations. And finally, there is the ultimate tool of punishment, the ultimate tool of manipulation for the adult narcissistic child, grandchildren. An adult narcissistic child will withhold them and hold the family system hostage with their own children, who may be nieces and nephews to their siblings, grand grandchildren to their parents. Some parents of adult narcissistic children who are so desperate for contact with their grandchildren will enable their adult child for access to the grandchildren, which seem like the most important thing. And it's understandable, but recognize that the moment you step out of line where your adult narcissistic child is concerned, they will pull those grandchildren back and use them as a weapon. So what are you supposed to do if you are the parent of an adult narcissistic child? First of all, this is all about boundaries, setting them and maintaining them. Whatever your role was, whatever your family story is, you can own it, you can take responsibility for it, and that's that. There are no financial reparations you owe your adult child. And your adult narcissistic child has the right to step away from you if they feel so hurt by what you did or didn't do for them. But to remain in an adult narcissistic child's manipulative prison for the rest of your life as some sort of debt you owe them is unhealthy and can become dangerous for you. Number two, Work with a good estate planner, reputable estate planner or trust attorney to ensure that you have whatever assets you have organized in a manner such that one child can make it that your, so that they, one child cannot make it so that your wishes are not honored after your death. In addition, and really perhaps even more importantly, make sure that you stay in control of your own finances as long as possible. If you have a difficult toxic or manipulative adult child, do not attempt to appease him or her by giving them power over your finances, financial decision-making, healthcare decision-making, and power of attorney. You may be doing what 
everyone does in narcissistic relationships. Just dreaming that someday you will give them enough and wake up and they will stop being so difficult and cruel. That's never going to happen. And in holding on to that hope and giving all of these things away and giving away this power, in essence, you could be putting yourself and other dependents at risk. Number three, please seek out therapy. Of all of the narcissistic relationships to own up to, having an adult narcissistic child may be the most difficult. You once looked into the face of this person and they were an innocent and beautiful and blameless child. Well, that is no longer the case. They are no longer a baby. It's dangerous to get lost in some romanticized fantasy of your babies. This is an adult and a problematic one. Number four, as you get older, please remain connected to other sources of support. Narcissistic personalities do their greatest damage by isolating their targets. If you are no longer, for example, you have a spouse or a partner, please ensure that you have friends, support groups, maybe relationships with your other children, but some place you can turn to to feel heard. Number five, grieve. It is so painful to have to let go of a child because sometimes no contact may end up becoming the only safe option for you. And if you feel like you to feel like you've lost your child is exquisitely painful. If you don't go no contact, and I get that, it's very difficult to do with your own child, then this becomes about boundaries. And you may see that once you are no longer willing to give them money or access to money or whatever they're asking for, you don't need to set a boundary because they're going to disappear. And that hurts. Number six, if you are watching this and you are concerned about someone experiencing this type of psychological, emotional, or financial abuse from a narcissistic child, please consider or explore working with the social services agency in your area to determine if this may actually qualify as something more severe called elder abuse. If a parent is over a certain age, or the parent is disabled, or is experiencing cognitive impairments or any issues that limit your parent's capacity, and an adult narcissistic child appears to be abusing this, or any adult child appears to be abusing this, and abusing the relationship, or siphoning off money, and, or taking money and not using it for the care of the parent, this may qualify as elder abuse. And you may be able to get legal protections in place for the adult who's experiencing this. Interestingly, I am finding myself working with more and more individuals who are enduring the anguish of a toxic, difficult, abusive, narcissistic adult child. To hear that your adult child who's being so difficult and who's fracturing the family system won't change is devastating. To feel you are somehow responsible is also devastating. The helplessness you feel is absolutely awful. But ultimately, there is no financial number or emotional gives you can get this, give this adult child that will address the resentment and anger and victimhood. The odds are that your adult narcissistic child is not making anything work in their adulthood in some ways. They may, may not be in a steady career, or they may not be able to manage a healthy relationship, or they may not be able to manage relationships with their own children, or they're having multiple children, even with multiple partners that they're incapable of caring for, leaving you potentially with one more financial burden that you may feel responsible for. There is no magic moment when they're going to wake up and hug you and say, ah, mama, dad, I know it was a rough ride, but thanks for being my parent. Please save yourself and do the difficult grief work while your child is living that is required to let go of any kind of relationship with your child and take that energy into healthier relationships in your life. And finally, take a step back. Got to remember this term narcissist is loaded. Don't just use it lightly. On this video, more than any other, obviously, there's got to be a lot of self-reflection on what was this person's childhood like. Now, if your adult child is choosing to set boundaries with you and may have communicated appropriately with you about patterns in the family system that have been unhealthy for them, and they're choosing to step back, you don't just get to call them a narcissist then. If they're showing empathy and have a functional life, you may not agree with their decision. What I'm really talking about 
is that these are the adult children who are constantly manipulating, gaslighting, engaging in the narcissistic patterns. In fact, your adult narcissistic child often won't set boundaries. To me, this is, again, that worst manifestation of intergenerational cycles. You may have been more likely, for, like I said at the beginning of the video, to choose a narcissistic partner because you yourself had narcissistic parents, you didn't get it, the whole trauma bonding cycle, then your child was impacted by these toxic dynamics and here you are. I can only wish you strength in this process. And again, please do seek out therapy because this is painful. This is a process of grief, of letting go and recognizing that some days are going to be much, much worse than others. And you will do it because once again, remember, one of the key issues in dealing with narcissism in your life is radical acceptance. And in this case, the radical acceptance is an absolute. You do it because you have to. Nobody wants to think that this is going to be the story of them and their child. They really don't. People imagine friendships with their adult children and beautiful time spent with their adult child, perhaps their adult child's, their own grandchildren, the adult child's children. This is how we imagine it. It doesn't always go that way. But the idea that you could keep enabling these patterns by enduring their ongoing abuse, which is often financial abuse, it is not going to change if you do choose to stay in one of these cycles and patterns and not set boundaries, please be aware that the odds that this will shift are very, very low. And thus my tips for at least some minimal things you can do to protect yourself. But again, this is really on you to make those choices and many ways sacrifice and give up on something that was and often is one of the most relationships in our lives, our children. Thanks again for tuning in. If you have any thoughts on this, please drop your comments. I know this is a painful one. It's actually a painful one to even research and think about and script so I can imagine how painful it is to take it in. If you want more content on this issue, please do let me know. And um, again, wishing you strength in all of your journeys. Bye-bye now.